Welcome everyone to this game where the world champion Magnus Carlsen takes on Daniel Dubov. Dubov was already at the board but just moving around, there he is. Firm handshake, both are good friends of each other. In fact, Dubov has helped Magnus to prepare for his world championship match against Nepo. Carlsen, as always, adjusts all his pieces. That's his routine to get into the zone for the game. And there you have it, 15 minutes plus 10 seconds increment. Magnus with the white pieces, Dubo, known as a creative genius. What is Magnus going to play? B3. He plays the little pawn move at the corner of the board against Dubo. Dubo has that nice little smile. Both of them must have played many blitz games on this opening. Also would have some prep against it. So it's very interesting to see what Dubo plays. And here he goes for this move G6. Interesting. Generally Knight F6 is the main move. He wants to play his bishop to g7 and that's why Magnus starts to think a bit. He plays his knight out to f3 attacking the e5 pawn and Dubo defends it. In comes c4. This is a very well known line. Knight g7 played and now uh, an interesting pawn sack variation could be b4. Because you want to play b5 and if knight takes b4 then knight takes e5 is hanging. So that is playable, but Magnus, I guess, is thinking not on those lines. Perhaps he is. <laughs> He's not making his move. Perhaps b4 is not such a silly idea after all. But the other main move, of course, is to play d4 here, right in the heart of the position. And if white were black were to go e4, you are more than happy with knight b2. And that's exactly what Magnus does d4 is played and Dubov knows his stuff. He takes on d4. Knight takes d4. Interesting move. Now notice that if you reach a position like knight d4, bishop d4 here, this is clearly better for white. So he castles and now the idea here for Magnus can be to take on c6. Because if you take back with the knight, I take on g7, King g7 and knight c3 and this is a very solid edge for white. You go bishop e2, you castle, queen d2, rook d1, very easy to play. So once you take on c6, then he must take with the d pawn. Oh, Magnus takes it. Because even if you take with the b pawn, then there is takes, takes, knight c3, which is better for white. Will Dubov take with the d pawn? Well, he does it and he does it with such ease. You know, Dubov makes tough decisions quite easily and this is quite simple for these top gms even though you've doubled your pawns you know that your bishop is coming out and that's very important queen d8 rook d8 and now magnus takes on g7 king g7 let's take stock of this situation white has three pawns here black has four magnus brings his knight out very logical there is a majority that white has on the king side against three pawns here a5 played by dubov but now notice you want to play a4 at some point, but the knight is defending against it. So how do you engineer it? Think about it. If magically you could transfer your knight to c5, that would be epic. But the, that is one square diagonal for the knight. And that takes literally four moves to achieve. So Dubo might not do that. It may take too much time. But we'll see. Bishop e6 played. Now, many players would short castle. But here... Magnus plays f3 because he realizes that his king would be better placed on f2 than castling. All in all, this is a dangerous position to play against Magnus, especially because black's queenside majority is not going to be very active. And also he doesn't have a bishop pair to compensate for it, which generally happens in the Berlin. King f2 played by Magnus and I love this move by Dubo. He is going on this knight journey, knight g8, knight f6, knight d7, knight c5. Wow! You know, the knight was not doing much on e7. It couldn't go to d5, not, couldn't go to f5. So knight g8 played. And now Magnus brings his rook to the center. Maybe he will exchange one pair of rooks, not both. I am really excited to see how Magnus is going to press in this position. Because, you know, you have some ideas like h3, g4. You also have ideas like f4, e4. So a lot of plans here for white. Meanwhile, black has to wait. Wait for the opportunity to push a4. 
that's where his real counterplay lies or maybe b5 if he can engineer it right now it looks very tough rook takes rook rook takes rook and now knight comes out to f6 dubo knows what he's doing he's going to d7 he's going to c5 he has covered halfway path to c5 with his knight with knight g8 knight f6 now one idea that i really like for white is h3 because then your idea you are playing g4 here or maybe g3 h4 you you just ready to do this but look at magnus's move rook d4 what is the plan let's think about it i think what magnus wants to do is he wants to play f4 and then e4 at the same time he's provoking c5 because c5 means that you can go back with your rook and then the d5 square opens up for the knight also knight b5 knight a4 comes into the picture dubo not tempted with c5 he goes knight d7 and knight c5 is coming up next magnus does play f4 again if you had gone e4 directly then i believe dubo would have pushed this pawn to f4 and gotten his knight to e5 with complete control so magnus first goes f4 preparing e4 with every pawn exchange his majority starts to get in motion that's what his idea is dubo has 13 minutes still left both the players playing pretty quickly now knight c5 the point here is that a4 now becomes possible yes a4 can be met with b4 but first magnus is like dubo a4 comes later first it's my breakthrough with e4 knight takes knight takes pawn takes okay now do you want to play king e3 and take here i don't think it's really any good because instead of defending this pawn you can play a4 so magnus must take this rook e4 attack the bishop uh and he does it and once this notice you can't go bishop f5 there's rook e7 check so you need to defend this bishop with king f7 or king f6 he goes king f7 and now a4 is a real threat imagine you try to take back the d file here then a4 and a3 great compensation and great play from the on the queen side so he goes a4 now magnus is stopping a4 but at the same time he has fixed his pawns on light square imagine a bishop coming to f5 and then to c2 so rook d8 played very simply bringing the rook into the game magnus comes up king e3 now he wants to trade rook d4 and go into a pure bishop end game what is that if you go into the pure bishop end game dubo is like i am all ready for it bishop f5 magnus you want to trade rooks please go ahead magnus does it you can avoid it with rook e8 check but will do both trade because notice if you take take then after g4 you can start getting play on the king side king takes d4 bishop goes to to attack the b3 pawn but okay magnus can of course defend it with king c3 he plays it and i like dubo's next move bishop e4 not giving any time to white hitting the g pawn and once that pawn is defended you can push c5 and fix all the pawns on the light square so if you don't do that maybe there's a chance that white might play c5 and there you have dubo very coolly and calmly in his typical style playing c5 now can you trade the bishops here bishop d3 magnus offers it of course dubo shouldn't take it if you take take this is completely lost position king comes up you get a passed pawn here so dubo has to avoid it this end game is not without dangers for black what does he do here because next up you want to create a passer dubo goes bishop f3 love this move attacking the g4 pawn pushing it to g5 even if you played h3 i would have forced you to push g5 in any case but now look at this dubo looking away from the board because whenever you are making long-term plans like fortresses you think in the distance and that's what dubo is doing he realizes that even if he puts his bishop on f5 and magnus takes it at g uh, gf5 that seems like a fortress because both these squares are taken up by the pawns king d2 and so you could play bishop f5 b6 played first and uh, now if bishop comes to f5 think about it bishop c2 bishop f5 and you take then i take king e3 king e6 h4 king back h5 and now very important to play the move h6 provoking g6 and playing this this is a draw but imagine you are careless and you play king g7 here this is lost because after h6 the white king comes from here 
and breaks through in this fashion and white wins so magnus of does not even take it he thinks of he has thought of all these possibilities he moves his bishop away and he tells dubo i don't want to go into the end game dubo says okay if you don't want to go that's completely fine with me i'm just going to keep moving my king your king has no entry point over here on e4 and d4 so you cannot make progress and you can feel it from the body language that magnus thinks it's going to be a draw he pushes his pawn to h4 is introducing the h pawn going to make any difference not really h5 played and now uh, once again very important that after bishop c2 you do not take here on c2 because after king c2 king comes up you sack a pawn king f4 get a passer and you are winning so you need to keep it there and there's the bishop trade here giving a protected passer is fine because the king can protect it there's no entry point and the players agree to a draw beautiful defense by dubo really loved his maneuver of the knight e7 to g8 to f6 to d7 that was so cool and both players discuss with each other magnus also knows he had very little chances because dubo played so well and uh, it was a good attempt by the world champion but was not successful a great draw by two great players Life is full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma. Your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck and your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective.